Nice one. All right. Okay. And we're back. We've had a bit of a break, but we're back now. Yeah. And this time we have a very special guest. We have Nadia Whitten with us. Hello, Nadia. Hey, it's good to be here. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. I'm uh, just going to get straight into it. Um, I'm a big fan of the Thick of It TV show. And I imagine in Parliament, I hope actually, it seems like on the news, it's just a bit crazy. It's a bit like, maybe a bit like the Thick of It. Is that true? It's it's so much like the thick of it that the thick of it is almost like an optimistic representation of what it's actually like. <laughs> and it's really funny when you're watching the thick of it. Some of the things that they speak about are like predictions of things that later become wow. Tory party policies. Like, you know, that first episode where they're in the car and they're going to the school yeah, yeah. and they're like, there is no big announcement. And they're trying to, they're trying to think of like things that they could say are the reason that they've gathered mm-hmm. all of the nation's press at this primary school in Hertfordshire or something. So they're brainstorming these policies. And one of them they come up with is a tax for spare bedrooms, wow. like the bedroom tax, oh, yeah. Yeah. which was a 2013 Tory party policy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically what we were talking about, like we, and when we do this podcast, we talk about like young people, how they can get inspired a lot yes. of the time. And we're talking like, young, are young people a little bit disenfranchised? generally speaking from politics mm. um do like we know kids that would be like at the thought of politics they'd switch off yeah um do you think from your like the people that you meet do you feel like young people are disenfranchised or yeah 100 yeah. percent. i think our generation kind of gen z millennials mm. have been disempowered disenfranchised disillusioned by the state of politics we've grown up under austerity basically we've seen our public services being cut to the bone Mm. people's benefits being cut all of these really cruel policies things like the bedroom tax and i think for a lot of people it feels like like politics is something that's done to us rather than something that we can engage in and be involved in and lead so like when you look at our lives they've been defined by insecurity haven't they Mm. whether it's insecure housing insecure job market Mm. the prospect of if you do go to university having to pay nine grand a year for it and then get into massive debt so that's 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 going to lead on to that so how how did you how did you what was the transition in your in your self like to say yeah you know what i'm doing politics because you're young you're, you're 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 a young person yourself like well a young adult now so what drove you to like say, you know what, I'm, I'm going for this. I'm going to go and do it. I'm going to go and be uh, in politics. Yeah. For me, I think I was so angry. Mm. Like it was, it was 2013. So we'd had 10 years of the Tory government then and it felt like forever. Mm. I mean, like I was, I was 13 when the Tories mm-hmm. got in in 2010 and three years when you're a kid and you're at school feels mm-hmm. like a lifetime. Mm-hmm. And it just felt like, yeah, all of our, all of our services had been cut, everything that we relied on. My mum was, um, she had to be out of work at the time. Um, so like things were just a, a real struggle. And mm. I remember her like cutting out these coupons mm. doing and doing these surveys that you got like 50p a survey. And I was just so angry. And then the bedroom tax was introduced and I read about it <laughs> and it's, so it's basically this this tax that is still still in effect now. And it means that if you live in a council home and you've got a spare bedroom yeah. and you need to pay a tax on that's, it, that's crazy. How, how cruel is that? that, is, that is when crazy. the government at the time and this current Conservative government are no different, if anything, they're even worse. We're giving tax breaks to billionaires and mm. bankers. Mm. We're blaming working class people for the 2008 recession mm. when we, we know that that, wasn't workers fault it was a global financial crisis caused by caused by the banks so i thought i can either get really angry and it just tip over into total disillusionment or i could be part of the fight back and that's 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 the that's the part i love Mm. that that decision there that 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 choice making there like you know what i can moan i can i can sit here and moan to the walls cave in or I can go and make a change or, or, or try and make a change. You know what I mean? And this is what I feel like a lot of the young people get stuck at the crossroads with. And you are, I, I, it's, inspir- it's inspiration. Like you, you actually made a choice for yourself and, and stuck with it. And now you are in a position to make change. Like, you know what I mean? So 
Got to commend you for that. Like, that's, 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 that's top tier for me. That's yeah. what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Fine. Anyway. I, mean, I think there are loads of different ways of doing it, though, aren't mm. there? And I think a lot of people don't recognise what they're already doing as being political. But, like, if you're... If you're an artist, if you're a musician, mm-hmm. that's that's political. Mm-hmm. Music is so political. If even yeah. if, if you're if you're a sports person, that's that also has a kind of a political function as well. It's something that 100%. brings people together across divides. Hundred percent. It's it's a platform that you can you can make change from as well. I, no, what I was trying to say is I just think it's because, like you said, an artist or a sports person. Can, it is political, but there's still that initial um, decision you got to make. Like I'm yeah. going to, I am going to take it to the next level mm. and and do it. You get yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Because yeah. you could be the most talented person in the world, but if you're not ready to do that, that's that that level where you and you said I'm going to, I'm going to do this thing. I've had enough. I'm going to do whatever you was going to do and get it done. And that's 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 the bit I like. You know what I mean? Like just like yeah, making a choice for myself and I'm doing it. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm sticking by it. It's discipline. It takes discipline. Yeah. It takes courage. It takes strength. You know what I mean? And you, you're, you're a perfect example. Young person from from the ends. You know what I'm saying? So it's interesting, like the whole, yeah, the idea of like um, a lot of the kids that we work with a lot. Of, and also like a lot of the mate, our mates, people we know, they say, um, I'm not interested. In, yeah, like, I'm not interested in politics. They say like, yeah, I'm not really about that or. Not all of them, but a lot of people go, yeah, I'm, I don't really follow politics. I don't vote or whatever, what have you. And you're saying politics is in everything and it's in the acts that we take and like the actions we take. But there, are, there is a feeling amongst certain people that I know, and I imagine you as well, where it's like, I've got no say in this, so I'm not going to say anything about it. Most of my, most of my community... Say ands. Most of my mates, anyway. I can't say for the whole of say ands because I, I, I never spoke to everybody. Say ands, but aren't you the spokesperson? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought you were the, 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 the inner say ands, the underground say ands. But anyway, most of the people that I know just do what you just said. Like, yeah, I, I'm not voting. You know, vote. They have the voting system actually in this building. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, me included. Yeah, I'm not voting because it's not going to make a change anyway. Like, just that you know that blase attitudes towards it, but. Right, what you're saying, it makes difference. Like we've had, we've had these people in power now for so long, um, and we're suffering. We're suffering. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah. And we can, we're at, the, we're on the ground. we we are on the ground. You know what I mean. We're the foot soldiers, and we are suffering, mate. Like nothing benefits us really if you look at it as a whole. That's what. That's just my opinion. So, yeah. go and vote. <laughs> go and vote. Go and vote. It's important. It's important. Yeah. So what? I totally agree with you. Yeah. So if a young person, like a teenager, no, like is thinking. Um, is there something that we could put in place maybe to get them more excited about politics? Do you have any ideas of what that could be? Because it seems like it's very hard to get excited. You seem to get excited by politics. Or do you? <laughs> I, I, think, I think it depends what you mean by politics. Like the stuff that really excites me is the change that's happening yeah. at a grassroots level, you know, from yeah, the, on the ground. That's, yeah, that's being built from the ground up. Rather than like, if you say like, do I get excited by the Labour Party or by the House of Commons? No, I don't. But I do. I do get excited by things like delivery riders in our city, mm. joining a union, organising mm. and demanding mm. better workers' the revolution. rights. Revolution. Yeah, I get, I I get excited by revolution. by people going on strike, by <laughs> even school children who are too young to even vote, yeah. striking off school over the climate yeah, yeah. because. They want a planet that they can live on mm. um, and they want to build a world that's better than the one that we inherited. I think that is really exciting and that is the, that's the kind of the cause for hope. So I think when people say voting doesn't make a difference, I mean, in, in a sense, it, obviously I think it, it does make a difference because I think that there is the world of difference between a conservative government and a Labour government. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that over the last 12 years now. But also I don't think that voting is like the beginning and the end Mm -hmm. of democratic participation. Like we should be joining trade unions and getting active in our workplaces, Mm -hmm. in our communities. Politics doesn't just happen every five years at a general election. Mm -hmm. It happens every day in our lives. Mm -hmm. And we need, we need to demand more power in our everyday lives. Do you, 
it seems like the the power of like the people what the power of the people as cliche as it is like actions that people take day in day out like it seems like that power of trying to make change within a community by the community taking action doesn't seem to be something that we in, encourage as much as maybe we could I, th- I don't know how you feel about this but like it seems like there's a point where if you have a, an opinion about something, you're quite staunch about it and you think it would affect change. You have to work really hard to actually get that opinion out there. Mm. Like you do it with music, mm. but a lot of other people, they, they're not sure where to go, where to put that voice, where to like actually have a, have a say. You know, you know, I've seen, this might be a bit off track, but you know, I've seen a few times on uh, social media, like this petition thing, that petition thing. Yeah. So you get so much amount of peti- uh, votes in the, in the petition thing. The government have to take, they have to look at it. Has to be debated in parliament. Yeah. hundred, yeah. hundred thousand. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So that's what you're kind of saying. That when the people kind of, kind of do get together, like it's like, it's like it, it has to take a, a tragic moment or something extreme hmm. for people to to rally together to but, yeah. but if you look at it when we do rally together we, we kind of do get hurt you know what i'm saying yeah and there have been really powerful examples of that like in the summer of 2020 when we had huge black lives matter demonstrations yeah. Yeah. and the one in nottingham had was over four thousand people yeah. at ours and it was it was incredible and mm. the government was forced to listen mm. to the, the realities of institutional racism, not just in the US, but in this country as well, in our in our own police force, which has already been been um, decried as institutionally racist. Mm-hmm. I think as well about I think it's it's difficult for people to rally together and take that collective action because all of our community infrastructure has been gutted by this government. So our community centres have all gone. Yes. Our youth centres have gone. Our trade unions have been yes. so weakened that membership is so, so low that they hardly have any power. And that's why places like this, like CRS, are so important because they're one of the the few yeah. remaining yeah. places that people can still come together, have their voices heard, demand change. Mm-hmm. And as well, like I, I don't know whether you've been looking at the strikes in London, but I know there's been loads of debate about this and like is it selfish to go on strike no like it's it's the least selfish thing you can do Mm -hmm. to go on strike not just for your own pay sometimes people striking have nothing to gain from it at all in terms of their own pay Mm -hmm. but going on strike so that your colleagues can get the pay and terms and conditions of work that they deserve and also so the wider public gets the service that that they that they deserve it's the least selfish thing you can do Mm. and every single workplace right that we have now whether it is the right of the weekend to holiday pay to sick pay to maternity and paternity pay Mm -hmm. every single one was won by trade unions and that is workers coming together that's all a trade union Mm -hmm. is is a group of workers that's dope i never knew that Yes, that's that's great. It does feel like um, in our lifetimes, it seems like that for, sort of trade union community is gradually being diminished, and that's purposeful, isn't it? Like massively, and um, because you can't have people saying too much, you got to keep them hush hush. You got to keep them down on a level. Yeah, got to keep everyone divided, and instead of looking upwards at who's really screwing us over, it would be much better for for the establishment if if we started having a go at each other instead, mm. and started saying, oh, it's it's not. It's not exploitative bosses and landlords who are to blame for our living standards falling. It's migrants or refugees or Muslims or trans people. Yeah. When actually our struggle is all the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so where, so where, so I'm just going to be straight. Like, where does, where does it, where does it, where does it stop them? Like for you then, because you're, 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 you've got your toe in the door now. You're in. Yeah. So. If we want, if we're saying that we want good for the communities, why, why, why is it these? Why are there these laws? Like, why, why are there these hurdles that that are? Why, why are they taking the youth clubs away? If we, if we're here to help the young people in, in the in the communities, why are they? Why are they these laws in the workplaces for uh, whatever? You know what I mean? Why are there these taxes? Like, it's 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 crazy. Like, if we're here for the good of the people, but we've got we're not really showing that, you know what I'm saying? So my question is, 
how far can you go in in your in your lane in your field? Like how far can you go? How how high in the rankings can you go to make to make that change? That's what I want to know. Like you know what I mean? So I think the people who are in power at the moment cut all of our services and benefits and workplace rights and the NHS yeah. everything because they don't really care about working class people and they're not in power to advance our saying. interests. They're in power to serve their own interests, the interests of their billionaire donors, that's, of, that's, that's of the banks. Um, in terms of how far can you go in Parliament, I guess it's almost like a philosophical question, isn't it, of, <laughs> of how, how change is won, whether, mm. whether it's won through Parliament or whether it's won through, like, well, the, the kind of two ideas are you can win change through reform mm. or you can win it through revolution. Mm. And I'm kind of between the two. I think that there there is a certain amount that we can win through the parliamentary system. Yeah. And I think that we're a long way off the ceiling yeah. of what we can achieve through yeah. parliament. Cool, cool. Do you do you do you feel or receive any like you know, like the kick under the table looks when you, when you, when you, yeah, because it's true. Like if, you, if you're speaking too much and if you're speaking, well, not too much, if you're speaking honestly in, in, in around tables that, that make a lot of powerful decisions, mm-hmm. do you feel like, oh, well, I might be saying a bit too much here or you get that little kick under the table or that look like, yo, you need to be, you need to be, you need to hush, hush on that. Yeah. Right yeah. Now, all the time. Much. Yeah. They don't like me, but that's, that's fine. Like I didn't come into it to make friends. I've already got my friends. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is so crazy though. Like I just feel like you're trying to do a good thing and you're doing a, you're fighting for a good cause. It's not like you, you know what I mean. You're not trying to. It's not for yourself. It's for it's for the benefit of, of the people in it. So for me, it's it's just it's just it's frustrating. You must get frustrated. You must get my frustrated. I find it really irritating when I stand up in Parliament and people opposite are just shouting me down, heckling <laughs> me so loudly that. I like I've told them to be quiet before. It's almost like they're dumb. It's almost like they've got no common sense. Like, can you not <laughs> listen? Can you not listen, mate? Like you yeah. are talking rubbish, mate. Yeah. Like, but then again, it's just perspectives, isn't it? Like people come from different lifestyles. People come from, you know what I mean? Not everyone's coming from the same background as as kind of us three, us yeah. three are coming like well, us five coming from. So it might be a bit of ignorance. It might be a not a bit, a lot of ignorance. Well, not only because they have their like they they should have their constituency surgeries where their constituents come and speak to them. And people in every part of the country are suffering the same things. Mm-hmm. Like obviously in, in Nottingham East, there are going to be more people who are like having their benefits cut, mm-hmm. who are in receipt of free school meals and who are suffering more because it's, it's a, a poorer area. Mm-hmm. But even in like Kent, in, in, well, actually, that's quite a lot of poverty in Kent. Mm. But this is the thing, like in any of these seats that these MPs represent, mm. there will be people who have had their benefits cut, whose free school meals are being taken away from them um, during the summer holidays. You name it. And I don't know how these MPs can look their constituents in the eye and say, yeah, I voted for that. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Even with, even with like this week, like obviously, like I say, I'm not really up to scratch with the, with the politics, but obviously I'm on social media. I see, I see what's going on right, just now and then. But with Boris, what was the, what was happening with, 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 with Boris, mate? Like, obviously some of his own team was trying to get him out. Yeah, yeah. It was, Is that what it was? Yeah, 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 yeah. But they voted him back in. So 41% voted no confidence, meaning like, right, he can, they, 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 know, they have no confidence in him, but okay. it has to be over 50%. So it's like, and what's that? What's that? They, they changed, they changed the leader of the party or, the, we review the whole party situation. Is that what that is? It's changing. So it would mean that there was a leadership election in the Conservative okay. Party. Okay. But then whoever won that leadership election would become Prime Minister. Okay. But we didn't even get to the point of having a leadership election okay. Okay. because um, 59% of them voted to keep him, which is so cowardly, voting voting to save your own neck yeah, yeah. when you know that your prime minister He's has finished. repeatedly broken the law, repeatedly lied about it. <laughs> like the, openly as well. The, the yeah. public Imagine. want him gone. Um, in fact, I was on the Jeremy Vine show earlier this week and Brendan Clark Smith, who's the Tory MP for Bassett Law, right in the north of Knotts, was on defending the prime minister saying, 
this is a clear and decisive win. I mean, I don't know how you can say that when 148 of your own MPs want you gone. <laughs> Yo, Nan's not actually showering. Like, you're actually a G. Like it's, it's like roadside. I swear, this thing's like roadside. Like you're in the you're in the trenches, yeah, with these guys. Like you just it's beef. It's beef. Like, you got my man over there who's representing that. You got my man over there representing that, and you're just representing for the people. Like you got to you got to give it up, man. I said to this guy, I was like, how can you, when you meet your constituents who <laughs> attended their grandparents' funerals on Zoom? How can you look them in the eye and it's tell them that you failed in your duty to get rid of your law-breaking, lying prime minister? And he said, you know what, I'm, I'm sick of people using their personal tragedy for political point scoring. Wow. This, that's, is, that's madness. The, this is like the depths of depravity of these people. Do, do, you, get, yeah. do you get sometimes like, obviously, because you're younger than a lot of these uh, politicians, do you get like, like a lot of... Do you feel like a lot of these uh, politicians are, are kind of like patronizing towards you because of your age? Oh yeah, and, definitely. Your, and your life experience. Definitely. But I've started like they think I think for them they think the only thing I can get her on is being young. So I'll just keep saying that she doesn't have life <laughs> experience. But I just lean into it now and I'm like, well, I went to school during during the 2010 Tory government. I know what it was like. I know how yeah. how big class sizes were. I remember doing learning in little porter cabins mm -hmm. um, and I went to a really good I went to Westbridge for comp like a, mm -hmm. a good relatively well-funded yeah. school compared yeah. to yeah. a lot of schools in our mm -hmm. city um yeah I sometimes it blows my mind like during this um parliamentary debate about child mental health Esther McVeigh stood up and started talking about how basically how lockdowns have ruined people's mental health and she voted against them and how all of this is because of lockdowns. Who, who's that? Who's that? She's, she's a Tory MP and she used to be the DWP minister, so okay. in charge oh, of well. benefits. Okay, that's bad she, news. She cut everyone's benefits. Wow. And I mean, on, on lockdown, like that's, that's a separate point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think that it was really damaging we wouldn't was. have had to have had as many lockdowns if the government had just got a grip of it in the first place. Mm -hmm. The government should have invested in mental health during lockdown, which it didn't. Mm -hmm. But all of that aside, this woman was the woman who, in the, the 2010 government, was cutting our benefits. And I remember at the time, I was at school, I was struggling with my mental health, so were loads of my friends. My mum was off work, and it was Esther McVeigh who cut our benefits and made things even harder was, for us. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there she was standing opposite That's me. Crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. That must be mad for you because you can see the hypocrisy. I mean, we all understand this hypocrisy, but you can see individuals acting hypocritically all the time like right, within parliament. Yeah. But do you, is, Are there any like MPs who I imagine there are a few that are quite supportive of you because you're, you're the youngest MP or one of uh, yeah, you're the, the youngest. Yeah. yeah. What in, so, in, in England? Yeah, yeah, in the UK. I see, you know, we're representing that. Here, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not in the beast, man. This is it. This is it. See? Yeah, there are some really good MPs. So, you know John McDonnell? Yeah. He was the, the former Shadow Chancellor. He's just massive, massive legend. Mm. That's good to um, he's, he's really great. Um, yeah, there, there are a few really, really solid MPs. Mm -hmm. Olivia Blake, mm -hmm. she's the MP for not that far away in Sheffield. Mm -hmm. And she's been doing loads of stuff on a Green New Deal. And she's kind of like my bestie in Parliament. <laughs> so our offices are next to each other mm -hmm. and we end up borrowing each other's stuff. <laughs> That's it. it. Got to keep the team right, man. Yeah. Serious. That's it. So I think it, it's quite interesting that Nottinghamese as a young MP, and I think it makes sense. Um, it's like Nottinghamese is sort of a microcosm in its own way. It's yeah, like, we're a young city, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And 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 the particular, your particular constituent, like constituency I'm not from Nottingham originally I lived in Radford when I came here and that is in your constituency isn't it it's actually, or it's near it's just outside oh, Heising Green yeah Heising Green Heising Green Green's in, yeah, yeah. Heising Green's in Forest Fields in Radford is yeah. just out yeah. so what's not, what is Nottingham East what is it so it's St Anne's Snenton Bakersfield sort of like half of town yeah. around Fix Centre yeah. um, not Carlton um it's so weird, these parliamentary boundaries. Um, Sherwood. Sherwood, Mapley, Forest Fields, New Baseford, Heisen Green, 
Arboretum. See, you just got Have all, I missed any? You've got all the ends. You've got all the ends. You've got all the ends. That's it. I've got like the best bits of not here. Yeah, yeah, no, to be fair, they had a, like, <laughs> when I first came here, I, I like, I moved into Radford and Heisen Green, like near Heisen Green, but not in Heisen Green, but go there all the time. And it I is like going, it's like another world. It's vibrant. You go, vibrant. Every, <laughs> everyone moves to Radford, the, f- the first place yeah. they come to yeah. in Nottingham. Yeah. Like my, my dad, when he moved to Nottingham back in the 70s, came to Radford. Yeah. yeah. It's vibrant. It is. It's vibrant. Had his, had his shop on Ilkeston Road. Oh, really nice. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. So you see, you see with the Nottingham thing, yeah? Like, so you take, you take control of Nottingham East. And so is there, is there one person that kind of governs the... As a whole of Nottingham, or is it, is it so split into parts? We have, we have Nottingham City Council, which is responsible for the whole of Nottingham, mm. and they set the budget for, for Nottingham. Okay. Um, they're like in control of bus services, okay. adult social care, children's social care. Um, used to be education, mm-hmm. but then the Tories made all schools basically an academy, mm-hmm. so they're now not in control. Wow. They're, yeah, not controlled by local councils, which is really bad because it means that they're not accountable at all they can do whatever they like yeah. they're basically like small businesses sorry i just went off on a total tangent <laughs> no, no, <that's laughs> cool. um and then for mps nottingham split into three yeah. so there's nottingham south which is lillian greenwood nottingham north alex norris and nottingham east which is me yeah yeah but actually i've i've lived in every nottingham seat apart from nottingham east yeah. so i live <laughs> i live in the meadows yeah. and i i lived there when i was a teenager and that's where i live now also lived in Top Valley, yeah. which is Nottingham North. Yeah, yeah, Meadows yeah. is Nottingham South. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. And I, you know what I think is good as well? I think the fact that because you're, you're young, you've got longevity in it. You've got, you, 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 you're doing it at the age you are now. And, and I don't know what, how, when you want to retire but, or whenever, but it's, it's like, it's like, it's like a journey with you. You know what I mean? We're, we, you're going to have a journey with, with generations. Like, you know what I mean? When I say that, you're going to have a journey with like, with gener- a generation of people, like our age, people younger, younger and younger. And it's just, it's, that's the best way. Like it's mm. only, only good change can, like you can't build a village over a night. You know what I'm saying? It, you can't build, Rome won't build over one night. So it, it's going to take years or it might take, I don't know how long it's going to take, but it's, it might take some time, but you have to gradually, yeah. Chip away at it. Yeah, Prime Minister. Exactly that. Yeah, and like, we're you not. Eight, eh? You ain't got that long to chip away at it. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. So you're a young age, so you're gonna. You got a lot of chipping away, a lot of time to chip away. And that's yeah, it. it's, it's a collective effort as well, isn't it? Like Definitely. we're we're only going to bring about the kind of change that we need in the world collectively by doing it together. Um, mm. There isn't. I'm I'm really resistant of this kind of putting people on a pedestal, whoever it is. Because no one's gonna, no one individual is gonna come and save us from the climate crisis. No, 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 no don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not putting you up there like you're Robin Hood. I'm just saying. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. Yeah, at least we've got one in the door. Like we've got someone in the door that's got a seat that can speak, speak what we're speaking. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, we can yeah, yeah. Speaking what we're speaking, and because if we didn't have no, before, before you was in there, people like me, we didn't have no one in there. So. Yeah. The, trans, the translation's getting lost somewhere. It's happened in St. Anne's for, for years. Like, even with, like, I don't want to name no names, but, like, there's been a lot of people that have had the power, that have had the funding biz, the pots, and they're not distributing it properly. You know what I mean? It's all for personal gain. It's all for, it's not for the people. It's not for the young people. So, now nah, that's where the trust gets broken down. You get what I'm saying with these people in power? They're coming from outskirts. They're coming from the outskirts of Nottingham or not even from Nottingham. And they're, they're, they're governing the, the pot. What, what can help change families' lives, change, you know what I mean, broken homes and change kids, young peoples and give them options, you know what I mean? So now we've got one of our own in there. It's a start to build back that trust again, you know what I mean? So so for me, it's like when that trust gets built up a bit more, you'll see young people start voting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? You'll see young people start re- getting into these unions and, and rallying and the revolutionary team looks, it looks, it looks mad. That's like when we went to the BLM on Forest, I was yeah. there. 4,000 people, mate. No one could talk to us. Nobody. No, you think it's a joke there? <laughs> Nobody couldn't talk to us, mate. We was, we was heavy that day. Yeah. And that's what it is. And that's, that's because the, obviously that was extreme in it because obviously a man, we had enough, but yeah. if we can get that on a level of like these, these, these little movements, Exactly. Yeah. And like everyone, there are so many inspiring projects that are happening around mm-hmm. the city. Like, mm-hmm. like yours is, is one of them. Mm-hmm. Next Gen Movement, mm-hmm. who organised the 
BLM protests. Mm-hmm. I was there as well. Yeah, it was sick. incredible. It was sick. Um, like Fearless Youth Association, Majasu, like mm-hmm. that. There are so many. And then people whose names we don't even know, but who are doing this organizing mm-hmm. in their communities, in their workplaces. Yeah. So people would like St. Anne's Advice Center, oh, like so Debbie Webster, Chris yeah. Shannon, uh, Phil Jackson, all those incredible. People. Yeah, yeah. And they're doing stuff like this under the radar for years. I mean, Sally Denton at Law, Law Center. Center. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Powell, mm-hmm. Constitute Outreach yeah. Workers. Yeah, so Danielle Scottese, who runs Powell, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just the trust. You have to yeah. build back the trust in the community. You have to build it back, like, and that's what it is. Like, when we have these movements, these little, like everyone you just mentioned, they are on the ground. You know what I mean? They're on the ground and they're with the people in it. They're not, they're not somewhere else they're doing trying, trying to govern yeah. somewhere that they're not. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah, that's been sure. happening in St. Anne's for the longest time. So that's why you'll get man like Trevor Rose, who, who people love, Nick Stairs, who people love, you know what I mean? Because they're on the ground with us. They're walking amongst us. Yeah, yeah. You, you're walking. You didn't have to come, you did not have to come here today. <laughs> it's been the highlight of my day. You know what I mean? You did not have to come here today. You could have been anywhere. You could have been with, I don't know, Jeremy Corbyn, whatever his name is. Mm. But you with us. I, I grew up listening to you. Oh, and someone asked me to ask you, why Mommy and Top isn't on Spotify? Is it not? No. <laughs> he he doesn't know anything about his Spotify. Don't. You know, he's yeah, being managed. Don't. Like, I don't, I don't. You I don't. need a manager, man. I do need a manager, I do. But I'm going to get him on Spotify. Tell him I'm going to put it on Spotify. You need okay. to get out on Spotify. I'm get on Spotify, I am. But like I was saying, anyway. My brother used to play that on repeat when we were kids. <laughs> on yeah, loop, yeah, on loop. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Don't kill mommy and top. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're still there, man. We're still there. Now you're fighting for that, that same place. And when, and when I heard the Skepta version, I spy, I was like, Oh, this is this is based on this is based on a song from my city. Yes. I said that in all seriousness yes, to someone. Yeah. You know how much people said that though? Like it's it's crazy, it's crazy. So But like I'm saying, yeah, like we have to build back the trust yeah. for me. We have to build back the trust and the, and for me, one of our own in there shaking things about, that's a start. It's that's good. A start. So anyway, on a lighter note, yeah. Forest. <laughs> Let's have it. Not a forest, mate. Best, best day of my life. <laughs> well, it was in probably like the top three best days, and also kind of the worst day. I felt so sick; I couldn't even watch, yeah, especially oh, the last yeah. six minutes. Horrible. Yeah, man. Absolutely harrowing. Let me, let me ask you a question: Were they penalties? Yeah. <laughs> yes, they were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, I'm, we're I'm, we're I'm glad now. they we're, weren't. We're but... No, we can say it. There was penalties. There were two. So, I've, I've, I've long said VR. Never lies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I, mean, yeah. I, I didn't say that in the Liverpool game when I was there, and it was definitely offside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in in this in this situation, so do you, do you think do you think Forest going up into the into the big league Premier League? Um, shout out to everyone at Forest. Uh, do you think that it's gonna build a, enhance us as a city? Do you think it's gonna build create opportunities as a city? Talk to, talk about it. I I really think it will. I think um I think it's what I think it's what our city needed after two years of yeah. real difficulty and hardship yeah. during the pandemic. I think this has given people some joy. Um obviously it's 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 not the answer to everyone's problems, I'm not saying yeah. that. Yeah. But it's um it's a positive. Th- this will bring investment to our city. Mm. It, yeah, it gives people some hope, something to be mm. happy about. Mm. Yeah, for sure. It was mad, like, seeing so many people turn out just to welcome the team back. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, it was beautiful. Like, how many, there's thousands of people there. Yeah. Not many cities would have done that. I don't think. It was, it was yeah. really, really beautiful. Yeah. I, I was at the... Yeah. <laughs> I just know what i It'd be a tumble we go through that. There any Huddersfield fans this out. Is what I know, saying. yeah. This is what I'm saying. They didn't deserve them penalties, man. <laughs> That's what they didn't get them. What, what penalties? The, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, shout exactly. out to the HUD, like, but you know what? It's only right. It's only, it's only right though. Not like you said, Nottingham is a is a big city, isn't it? Like we we we've been doing this, so we it's only right, like you're saying, that like, we we're we're back where we're supposed to be. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. come on, man, the back to back Brian Cluffy days, back to back Champions Leagues, not yeah. not Man City and they haven't done that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. we have to we're back where we're supposed to be, man. It's exciting times. Yeah, exactly. It is exciting times. Exactly. So, I I went to the the council house for the like welcoming okay. players back, 
And when when I got there and I saw the crowd, it was so overwhelming and bearing in mind I was still a little bit hungover from the night before. I was was on a high from Wembley, like just an emotional high. And um, yeah, I just got a bit tearful. Mm. And then BBC Radio Nottingham approached me for a comment and I just like didn't hold it together. Oh, wow. that's, 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 that's the real, that's the real deal. Yeah. That's the real deal. She said, "Oh, you a big Forest fan?" And I was like, "Well, I don't know. When you go to school in Nottingham, you're either a Forest fan or a County, county fan. fan. Yeah, and yeah. no one wants to be a County fan because you get shit ripped up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Jake Morgan's a County fan. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm a I'm a Bryce Samba fan now. He's, he's you know what? what? I'm, hear, I'm hearing. Have you heard that he's? Yes, I'm leaving. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. They've gone mad. They can't get rid of Bryce Samba. Like nah, he, nah. I think he's a, I think he's a big keeper. Yeah, I think he's yeah. actually yeah, a yeah, good yeah. keeper. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm hearing like they're trying to go for what's his name, Nick Pope. Is it Pope? He's good as well. But yeah, he's well, good. Yeah. But I don't think we need him. No, no, no. I don't. No, think no. Yeah, the way Samba predicted the future for those five minutes <laughs> in that semi final, he predicted the future for those three penalties. Yeah. One of them, he just stood there and went like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> massive, thought, isn't it? It's massive. Yeah, it's yeah, massive. yeah. Well, yeah, we have to keep Samba, man. Obviously, not everybody can stay because it's a different level, isn't it? It's a different level of football. So we have to shake things about but, and, and add, add a bit of quality. For me, staying up is just, just that's, that's, a, that's a result. Yeah. Staying, up, staying up is a result, mate. Let's just, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, so that's one thing contributing to a positive, and we'll, we'll wrap, wrap it up now, but like going to a positive not. It does feel like, yeah, so that's one thing, small thing, but it's very meaningful. Mm-hmm. And um, it also seems like we there's a few like musicians and like filmmakers mm-hmm. getting a bit more uh, access to stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, John, once he sorts his Spotify out and gets a manager, yeah. man. <laughs> I'll, I'll be getting them, I'll be getting them to do that. Is this true? It's true. Yeah. Well, like you say, it's true. Like, um, Bruce, he's doing yeah. it. You know what I mean? He's representing the flag highly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, window, window kid. Yeah. He, he's he's not as he is. Darcy. Yeah, Darcy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young time. T Bugs there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, what I spoke there? about Young T and Bugsy in my maiden speech. See? So oh, your right. maiden speech is the first ever speech that you make in Parliament. And I spoke about community recording studios. Yes. And Young T and Bugsy. Yes. Yeah. Um, nice. That's it. They're flying the flag. They're like, we've got, we've got, and it's going to be more. That's what I'm saying. It's going to be more now because the city is, like, like I say, it's a big city. Mm. I don't think people understand Nottingham is a big city, in it. Like, we're not, no one of them small, you know what I mean, side cities. We're a big city. Yeah, so. yeah. We're, we're a main city. We're, we're up main. there with Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool, all of them. Yeah, Newcastle. All of them. Mm-hmm. So now, the opportunity is going to be there for the young people, for the working class people. We've just got to be ready, like what I was saying to you at the beginning of this, of this episode. The tr- that, that, that spark... That spark that we've got, don't miss it. Don't, don't miss it. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Don't be scared. Yeah, that's it. And hopefully with yourself, like, doing some stuff um, and being active and being on TV and actually saying things that young people can get behind for mm-hmm. the first time. I mean, in a while, anyway, like a politician saying things that we can actually get behind. Mm-hmm. Maybe some kids in CRS be like, yeah, no. I want to be an MP, you know. <laughs> yes. I want to be a councillor. I think it's a joke, though. Like that's the, I'm on about. That's the whole thing I'm on about. Like you, we can now make certain things cool again. Like not even cool. I'm not saying it was ever cool. But I'm saying like, <laughs> yeah, what's it again? But we can make certain things cool in it. Like yo, Nads is strolling in here doing a thing. Like a young girl might see her and say, yo, I just like her aura, you know. Like she's yeah. she's professional. And she's 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 just got a light about her. Like I want to, I want to get to know and talk to her, and I want to follow the suit. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about. It's about having positive leaders, positive role models, setting the setting the, setting the way. You know what I'm saying? Setting the way for the young ones to kind of look at it and like, yo, that's kind of hard, you know? Yeah, yeah. Create, get creating new leaders and taking taking the learning that we've gained and the opportunities that we've gained through the, and I'm the sorry, positions that we've been in and yeah, the sharing it out is not doing that. I'll be honest, the eight-year-old man is not, he's, he's not happening. Well, they probably are in their own social class yeah. and in yeah. their own yeah. way. Yeah. In that way, in that way, but not for the young people, not for the young people. No. They're, not, they're not. Okay, so is, is there anything you want to mention on a sign-off? Um, Going to make any beats with John? <laughs> yeah, I think we should redo Marmy and Top. Yeah. Like, yeah. 2020, Marmy and Top 20, 20. yeah, yeah. Let's do it, let's do it, let's get it going. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for doing this. No, thanks so much for having me. It's been great. I also really like the column in the left line, um, which I read every time oh, it comes thanks. up. Yeah. 
I had a Tinder message about that. <laughs> the other day, like, Nadia, I really liked your left line com- column on the Luddites. <laughs> oh, wow. Before we leave, what was that What was that thing that you, like, watched? Like, what is it? The, what? Oh, the thick, thick of it. The, the thick of it. Thick of it, yeah. Where's, where's, send it, man. Yeah, man, you need to it's watch it. It's very funny. It's it, the funny, it. it's mad. It's <laughs> hilarious. It. Sadly, it is like that. And sadly, there are a lot of, a lot of like, privately educated, Oxbridge educated, white young men who have watched the thick of it and think, That's yeah, me. I want to oh, do that. No, and then missed, come into parliament. That. That's crazy. That's crazy. They missed the whole point of the, the thing. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> All right, thank you so much again. And uh, thank you, if you ever want to come on here, just show us. Some... <laughs> cool, let's wrap up there. Cool. I'm grown into a fine young man. Truth be told, I ain't done bad from the life one had. Beautiful soul and a wife that's more. 